Many suggest that your willingness to talk stems from the fact that in four months of you coming here, you've seen desertions, you've seen internal dissent, and what you have primarily are second-hand candidates. Mostly, eight of your candidates right now are the ones who were denied a ticket by the Congress. Two of them themselves joined you because they were denied a ticket from the BJP. What are the three things you said? Uh, you Desertions, said internal dissent, and... Uh, defection. No, no, no. Def uh, desertion, internal dissent... Are, what would I say? Uh, okay. Candidates, your candidates, second-hand candidates. Let me tell you, these three words can be applied to any party in Goa. Uh, it can be applied to any party, even, even the Indian National Congress. Falerio, uh, Mr. Falerio left the Congress and joined Trinamool Congress. Mr. Lobo left the BJP and went to Indian National Congress. But Mr. Falerio the same, also... The same Goa Forward Party, which put egg on the face of Indian National Congress, has now gone back to Congress. So I think, I think we are all at par. So let's not uh, do any mudslinging. Each party has been through a similar experience in Goa and we are all fighting it out with what we think are good candidates. Well, and at least we are not getting our candidates to say, please take a pledge that you're not going to defect. See, let me put it in perspective. What good is a pledge when the constitution says if two-thirds of your MLAs decide to leave, they'll go? Is the Congress pledge greater than that? And that's exactly what happened to the Congress. So this pledge is not going to work. Mm -hmm. This pledge is not going to work. But I understand why the Congress is doing it. It comes back to what I said. There's a huge trust deficit where the Congress High Command can hold on to the candidates that will win and come. And the biggest evidence of that is the pledge. Sushmita, so, you know, the Congress suggests that eight of their, the ones that they didn't give a ticket to, are the ones that you've entertained. Two of them from the BJP. So That's Mr. why Lobo, the second hand. Mr. Lobo and his wife were not getting a ticket from the BJP, so they are in the Congress. I yes, mean, fair enough. I mean, you know what I'm saying. So we are all guilty of the same thing, or we all stand vindicated of the same thing. It's, it's, uh, look at it either way. Sushmita, so, where does the TMC's alliance with the MGP stand right now? Because the MGP was missing when the manifesto was announced. Because it is said your best bet right now in Goa is your alliance with the MGP. See, MGP was not missing. The working president of the MGP was there. Yes, I understand when you say that alliance cannot only happen on paper. Uh, alliance has to work on the ground. There has to be a vote transfer. So MGP has to transfer their vote to us. And we are working on that. We have a complete schedule of where MGP leaders will campaign for our candidates. Just wait till the 5th and I think uh, that, that was my second question because yeah. they haven't really come down. But I'll ask you another one. Where does the TMC, you know, keeping in with your alliance with the MGP, where does the TMC stand on ideology? Because when you take on nationally, you have this very anti-Hindutva, anti-right-wing stand. The BJP does this, 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 this. The MGP has gone a step further in many instances in Goa. So is the ideology different at a national level when you're looking at making national statements? When it comes to alliances, it suits you, so you go with the MGP? What is the TMC ideology? See, if, if you look at our manifesto, uh, it's very clear. Those are the things we've agreed on in Goa. It's like saying, why is the Congress with Shiv Sena? You know, it's like saying, why is the Congress with Shiv Sena in, in Maharashtra? Isn't there a clash of ideology? It's very simple. MGP is opposed to the Bharatiya Janata Party. MGP is going to fight Bharatiya Janata Party in their bastions. So we are very clear that MGP is, is going to uh, defeat the BJP in their strongholds. We are quite sure of that. We've done our homework. So let's wait till the 10th of March. And you think MGP will still stay with you after the 10th of March? Yes, they will. They, they definitely will. But I'm not sure whether Goa Forward will stay with the Congress. You see, so, you see, I'll tell you something. Uh, it's a real issue in the minds of the people that what, what and who they are voting for, what will happen on the day of the... Uh, uh, thing. That's why Amadni Parties has an affidavit. You know, it's a nice gimmick. You know, Congress has a pledge. But we are very clear. We've had we've had our talks. We've agreed on uh, on wh what kind of politics we want to ensue as alliance partners, and that's our faith. And that's our faith. And I'm hundred percent sure that the MGP will not go with the BJP. Their entire politics is against the B uh, BJP. Look at it. Theology is the same. Ideology, see, ideology may be the same, but the question is, when two parties come together, you have like a common minimum program, which I've seen in the Congress, and that's our manifesto, and that's our agreement. You know, that's our agreement. And, I mean, you, politics is very dynamic. 
so you 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 are right in saying that ideologically are you on the same footing but we saw mgp as a force that could fight the bjp in their bastion and that's was the basis of our alliance with them